Good morning, everybody. Uh, apologies for the delay. Um, and we're really happy that you came out on this Monday morning to join us. I know there's a lot of things happening today. I think also it's World Ozone Day today, which is also being acknowledged. Um, but here today, we're going to be talking about biodiversity data and the link to policy and sustainable development goals. And I'm going to be opening um, by inviting our um, Honorable, the Madam Permanent Secretary, to come up and, and welcome us and give an opening uh, speech while we are waiting for the Vice Chancellor, who wanted to be here to welcome all of you and um, Madam Permanent Secretary, but he was delayed at headquarters, so um, he'll be arriving shortly. So um, with that, just very briefly, I want to say that uh, we're very, very thankful to have um, partners with um, University of Oxford and University of Kansas in the United States uh, and Oxford in the UK that have chosen to come here to Rwanda with this training, biodiversity information training. And um, the goal is to train a community of individuals that are passionate about and knowledgeable, knowledgeable about uh, data management. And we're going to spend the morning talking about why that is so important. And uh, we're very thankful to have um, Madam Permanent Secretary here from the Ministry of Environment to welcome all of us and to um, you know, express the sentiment, the interest of the Ministry of Environment and uh, the government of Rwanda in the importance of biodiversity data. So thank you so much. Matthew Child from South African National Biodiversity Institute, Erin Sob from University of Oxford, UK, distinguished partners, uh, speakers and panelists, uh, development partners here present, representatives of the private sector and civil society who are present, ladies and gentlemen. Naramutse. Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> it is a pleasure to be with you for today's biodiversity data and the policy discussions. I wish to thank the organizers for their hard work and commend our partners, including the University of Oxford, University of Kansas, and of course the Center of Excellence in Biodiversity and Natural Resource Management at the University of Rwanda for making today's gathering a reality. I wish to also highlight the role played by the JRIS Biodiversity Foundation in providing support for the training course that will take place over the next few weeks with the focus on measuring and quantifying ecosystem services and essential biodiversity variables this course will be essential to put into practice what we will discuss today. For more than two decades, our country has worked to put the environment at the heart of our socioeconomic transformation. These efforts come from an understanding that economic prosperity and ecological integrity cannot be separated. It is only through understanding and valuing our natural asset that we can truly protect our environment for generations to come. Today, we have a number of major initiatives underway to achieve the goal we have set for ourselves, which is to be a developed, low carbon and climate resilient nation by 2050. To achieve this, we are embarking on border-to-border -border landscape restoration, expanding our national parks and forested areas, restoring urban wetlands, introducing sustain sustainable mobility solutions, and promoting climate smart agriculture and nature-based tourism, just to mention, to name a few. All these initiatives require data for planning, 
monitoring and management, and to inform police. We also need skilled environmental practitioners who are trained to use those data and communicate them to policymakers, the private sector, and the general population. That's why today's discussions and the training course are so important. As Rwanda works to meet the obligations under the Convention on Bi the Biological Diversity, Nagoya Protocol, Paris Agreement, among others, biodiverse data is an untapped resource that should guide and support us. Only through an evidence-based approach to policy making will we meet the sustainable development goals and our, of course, national targets. Thanks to the work of the Center of Excellence in Biodiversity and Natural Resources Management at the University of Rwanda, and of course its partners, Rwanda is currently in the midst of a revolution in biodiversity data management. For example, the first Biodiversity Information Management Forum was held last year in 2018, and will, it will be hosted again this year to bring stakeholders together for common understanding of biodiverse data needs, priorities, and capacity building strategies. A national biodiverse information management system is being developed by the center to inform management and early detection of environmental changes. The system will first be used to improve the management of the Mukungwa catchment, one of our nine nine catchments across the country. The, the African Biodiversity Challenge, managed by South African National Biodiversity Institute, is also supporting Rwanda through the Center of Excellence by building capacity for data management and production of data products to inform policy and management. And finally, the Biodiversity Training Course hosted by the Biodiversity Informatics Training Curriculum Project at the University of Oxford that follows today's event will increase capacity for biodiversity data management. I'm especially pleased that course participants come not only from Rwanda but across the continent because so many of challenges we face are shared. By training people, to use biodiversity data will, will, well, will, will be well placed to produce value-added information about ecosystem services, essential biodiversity variables, and biodiversity trends that can be utilized by many nations. These initiatives are all supported by the GRIS Biodiversity Foundation, and we are very grateful for their ongoing contribution to Rwanda's environmental protect protection efforts. Ladies and gentlemen, today we are gathered to encourage discussion and deeper understanding of why biodiversity data are integral to sustainable development and poverty reduction strategies, and how a biodiversity information system can create an enabling environment for biodiversity data to be made available. I encourage all participants to make the most of this opportunity and be part of the good work that is underway by harnessing the power of biodiversity data. We can fast track our effort to build a green and climate resilient Rwanda. Thank you so much for your kind attention.